What's going on everyone? Kevin from Epic Gardening here. Today, behind me, we're taking a look at an LED light. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. And we're actually gonna take a look at this specific light, which is the Mars 96. So stay tuned, let's go ahead and break it down. All right, let's take a look at this in depth. So as we can see, it already comes with this sort of interesting lime green color. Uh, not probably my favorite color, but it definitely makes a mark. It's definitely interesting and unique to look at now. But what's really interesting here is what's going on on the back, which we will cover in a little bit. But let me just show you. You've got your grow or your vegetative light, which it's not plugged in, so it's not going to turn on. But this would be your blue spectrum. And you can control that independently as compared to your red light, which would be your flowering or your fruiting spectrum. And of course, you could just turn both on if you wanted to. So that's a really interesting feature of this light. And you know, I know this is a common feature these days is the toggle. My personal opinion on it is the more light, the better in all but the most extreme cases. So I would always opt to turn both of these on. But if you're a more specific grower or you perhaps have a different growing preference, then that is definitely something that you can consider. Puts out uh, 450 watts, 250 watt HID equivalency. Now that's a sort of a misleading term, but I figured I would include it because it's sort of industry standard as well. What they're trying to say with that is that this replaces a 250 watt HID light, which would be something like a metal halide light, a high pressure sodium light. And one might argue that using the LED over using, let's say, an HPS or an MH bulb exclusively would give you a more blended spectrum because those metal halide lights are a little bit higher in the blue and the HPS lights are a little bit higher in the orange and red spectrum. So vegetative and then the flowering spectrum. Now, a lot of growers will combat this by using metal halide lights earlier on and then switching to HPS lights or maybe just going with a light like a ceramic metal halide, which despite the name is quite different in its function from a metal halide and offers a pretty across the board spectrum of light. Now, that being said, what this one's trying to do is replicate the effectiveness of using sort of an MH to HPS type of transfer in your growing because you can just turn both on or even toggle individually. Now, build quality wise, it's a very solidly constructed light. We've got an interesting placement for the top plug. So the plug is actually right here. So when it's hanging, which you'll see in a second, the plug actually plugs in from right here and kind of droops down. But you know what? That's probably because of the design of these toggle switches here. They couldn't put it on the back. And so, you know what? Not a big deal. Then you've got the Mars Hydro decal and just some information here on the back, some of the standard things. So that being said, the only other thing I would note would be the use of these two fans, which you'll see will turn on when you hit the grow button right here. Will not turn on if you're only using Bloom because basically it's just using less power and less heat. And thus, I, I would assume that the design of the light does not require fanning that out or ventilating that out. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into some more details about growing with LED lights. So here we are looking at the back of the panel right here. And as you can see, we have the growth or what I like to call vegetative phase and then bloom or what I like to call flowering phase switches right here. And so let me go ahead and run through just turning these on. There's our grow, as you can see, putting out a lot of that blue light. If we listen, the fans have started to activate here. And this is great, obviously, for that vegetative phase. If you've watched any of my videos on light or checked out any of my my content on the website about light. Now let's go ahead and turn this off. And now we're gonna go bloom only and see what this looks like. As expected, we've got the red, yellow, orange light coming out. That is what's going to be more beneficial as a plant reaches that flowering phase or that fruiting phase. Now what's gonna happen if we turn both on? We would expect the color to blend a little bit as well as the light output overall to actually increase because we're using the full power of the light. So here again, that is gonna be our vegetative phase. And this is going to be our flowering phase. Now what happens when I switch both? We can see we get a nice mixed light closer to a white, not quite. And it's, it's more in that purple range. But again, the, the intensity of light is also highly increased. If we kind of look at just the overall light output, it's quite a bit higher. And this, for these reasons, 
this is why I would stress using both all the time. I personally would not ever have only one on because if I'm going to get more intensity of light, even if a plant's not using 100% of, let's say, this blue light here or this red light here, well, that's fine because it's not like they don't use anything in those phases. They definitely use some. So that's a look at the back of the system. All right, so we have our light hanging. As you can see, it's on hooks that hook to ratcheting hangers right there. And then I can adjust either of these as well as adjust their placement at the top of my tent here. So this is a Gorilla Grow tent. It's the GGT 2x4. But that's not important right now. What's important is this light. So hanging distance is really important when it comes to an LED light or really any indoor grow light for that matter because what you're dealing with is if we think about what we're doing, we are replicating the sun. This unit right here or any other light, LED or otherwise that you're growing with is your sun, right? So that being said, because our sun is so powerful outside, about 10,000 lumen output per square foot, uh, we can't really replicate that indoors, so we need to make the most use of the output that's coming out of this light as possible. So something called the inverse square law of light is what's going to be at play here for determining where to place your light relative to your plant surface. So what's happening there is, what it says is, the light output falls off at the square of the distance. And so let's say you have 100% light output from a foot away. Well, if you move it to two feet away, you do not have 50% of the light output. You actually have 25% of the light output, which means every little incremental distance that you put your plant or your light farther away from the plant surface is going to be a pretty significant drop off in intensity. Thus, getting to the point here, the optimal place for a light is pretty much the closest you can possibly be to your canopy while still covering the entire grow space. Because remember, as these lights come out, they, they shine sort of down in this direction and there is a coverage, total coverage, based on the size and power of the light that's going to be put out. So let's say you have a plant surface like right about here. Well, you're gonna want your lights as close as possible to this surface where light will still come out and cover this surface. And also, you're gonna want it to be as close as possible without inflicting any light damage, as in too much light potentially burning or stressing the plants out too much, especially if you're growing in a light system that puts out a good amount of heat. So that is your quick tip on lighting placement. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the specifics of this particular light, just to see if it's a good value for you. I know a lot of people are going into the LEDs these days versus something like a high pressure sodium or a metal halide or even ceramic metal halide uh, because they're a little bit more energy efficient, the lifespan's longer, and typically they're a little less expensive. Now let's figure out if those benefits outweigh any potential downsides to growing with an LED or this Mars 96. So let's talk coverage and hanging distance. The hanging distance is gonna depend on the stage of your plant's life. So if you're at the seedling stage, your starting seeds, you're gonna keep it 20 to 28 inches away from the canopy. If you are in that mild vegetative growth, you can keep it something like 20 inches, 14 to 20 inches away from the canopy. And then once you get to flowering where that plant is really established, can take a whole lot of light and needs a whole lot of light, then you can go anywhere from 10 to 14 inches away with this particular light. Remember, every light, either based on the type of lighting they're using, CMH, HPS, MH, LED, or the intensity of that system itself, how much it's actually putting out, that's going to determine hanging distance as well. But these are some general recommendations for the Mars 480 right here. Okay, let's talk about coverage. So anytime you're buying a light, you wanna figure out how much space it's going to cover. Will it fit in my particular tent right here? Again, I've got that Gorilla 2x4 tent. So ideally, I'd like a light that has at least 2x4 feet of coverage. So the thing to know here is that the, this coverage, at least as recommended by Mars on this light, is going to shift based on the phase that the plant is in. And I think that sort of stems from the way that they've decided to design this light by splitting it into grow and bloom spectrums. Although again, as I said, you can turn both on like I'm doing right here. But the thing to remember here is in the vegetative phase, what they recommend is a coverage of three and a half feet by five feet, which is clearly going to be more than enough for my little system right here. As you can see, the light output is pretty darn good right there. Of course, I don't have any sort of meters to do that right now, but you know, just based on this and based on the human eye, it's looking pretty good. 
But what happens here is they recommend that during the bloom phase, the spectrum, or sorry, the coverage goes down to two feet by three feet. So if you're gonna want to be growing your plant all the way from vegetative stage all the way through to the flowering, fruiting, and eventually harvesting, well then the coverage that really matters, the coverage recommendation that really matters would be that flowering coverage. So two feet by three feet, even though they recommend that it's a little bit bigger in the vegetative phase, for me feels like the maximum coverage. Because again, I'm growing one plant all the way through, then I, then I clearly need that flowering coverage to be as big as possible, and that's gonna be the max. So in my tent here, I've got my two by four gorilla, like I've said a few times, uh, that's actually not gonna be enough. I might want to choose a light that's a little bit bigger because this is only two feet by three feet. Now, that's completely fine. I would probably still grow with something like this because I might not want to be maximizing every square inch of my growing space, but if that's a concern for you, then you do definitely have to get a light that at least matches, if not exceeds a little bit, the total square footage that you have to grow down in your grow tent or wherever you are deciding to grow. All right, my friends, that is our look at the Mars Hydro. This is the 480 reflector series. It's got the toggles here and all the other information is also gonna be showing up in this video. So if you wanna take a look at it, definitely feel free. There's a link probably in the description, but my final take, is this a good value LED light? for the money. Uh, in my opinion, there is a space in the not extremely cheap, but not absolutely high end market for a company like Mars or other companies out there to thrive. And I think they do a pretty good job here. The one thing that I would say is it's a Chinese manufactured company. So you are getting stuff from overseas. If that's a problem for you, then maybe it wouldn't be the company for you. But what I've noticed is over the last one and a half to two years, their company has really started to put a lot of effort into marketing to the US market in a way that's familiar to US consumers like you and I. Uh, and what you don't see with a lot of these more scammy or illegitimate LED companies, in my opinion, is that they're sort of run and gun, they're sort of fly by night operations where let's say you get a light that doesn't really work out for you, that warranty that's supposedly there is gone, poof, thin air, you can't even contact the company. Now what I've noticed in my communications with Mars, both as a consumer beforehand and actually after, after they sent this product out, is their customer service has actually really surprised me for at least what I perceive to be uh, a sector of the lighting market that typically does not really care about that. They're looking to ship product, they're looking to make their money, and they're looking to either launch new brands, launch new products, or maybe even move on to an entirely new line of business. Now, that being said, at the $160 to $180 range, I would say it's a pretty good value for a mid-tier grower. So if you're someone who is looking to either get your feet wet at a more serious level or try to get highest bang for the buck type of, of yields or output from whatever you're growing in here, then I would say definitely worth a consideration. And I would also encourage you as always to do your research on all the different options available to you. And you know, honestly, I have a decent amount of reviews on particular brands, including Mars, on my website. So you can go in the product description. I'm trying to bring a little bit of clarity to the indoor growing light market and figure out what all these brands are, where are they coming from, and then what is their quality in relation to all the other ones? Because this is a market that's always exploding, especially with some new regulations that have passed this year in certain states in the United States. Uh, this is just keeping up with that demand. Everyone is wanting to learn this stuff. And you know, as someone who's still learning myself, I do feel that I can bring a little bit of clarity to the industry, at least in the spheres that I understand. You know, I'm far from an absolute lighting expert. I didn't go to school for it or anything like that, but I am, I do consider myself pretty able to just put together information, contrast and compare, test in grow tests or just matching spec sheets against other ones, tracking where companies are coming from and what type of service quality that they have. Uh, all that stuff I feel I can do a pretty good job at, so hopefully this was helpful. I really encourage you guys to at least give it a look-see, see if it makes sense for you. And if it doesn't, no big deal. There's plenty of other stuff on the market that's probably a perfect fit for you as well. So thank you so much for watching. There are a whole lot more uh, product review style videos coming soon. I'm gonna be covering more hydroponics like I did earlier on in the channel's life. 
And you know, if there's anything that you'd like me to see, anything you think I missed when covering this light, please let me know in the comments. I respond to every comment. I respond to every comment, which is still crazy to me. Uh, but I do do that because I want to thank you guys for watching videos. I want to thank you for being a part of the community and just coming along on this journey with me as I sort of learn how to grow my own food and be a self-sustainable, prosperous human being. All right? Until next time, guys, good luck in the garden and keep growing. Peace.